Writing is something that people think should be self-intuitive, but it's not. Um, the expectations of readers and writers have both changed over the years. Readers are busy now. They want to be able to gather information in as succinct a way as they can, and that puts the onus on the writer to present their information as clearly and succinctly as possible. I became interested in scientific writing out of necessity as a faculty member at the University of Michigan. In graduate school, I helped write papers with my advisor, but was really not taught the fundamental concepts of writing a scientific or biomedical research paper. And I took it upon myself to continually train myself and educate myself more throughout my academic career on ways to write better, making use of the best resources, and really bringing maximal clarity to my, my types of papers. Over time, I became involved in editorial boards. I found out as an external peer reviewer that the more attention I paid to the details of a paper. The more time I took into reviewing a paper, the better I became as an author. And over time, I decided that I would use these resources and the experience I've gained to prepare teaching materials and courses to help others maximize the clarity in their writing. One mistake that authors make is that they automatically assume that the reader understands everything they're trying to say within a paper. It becomes so self-obvious to the author that they don't realize that terms that they use, the way that they present their data, the way they present their results, and the way they discuss their results may not be that obvious to the reader the second mistake that authors sometimes make is that there's a lack of consistency between the various sections of a paper. <clears throat> An author needs to make sure that a title is clear, that the terms and keywords that are used in a title are the same as those that are used in the abstract, and are the same as those that are used in the introduction and the remainder of the paper. The message needs to be consistent throughout the paper as well. The question that an author asks in the introduction needs to be answered somewhere in the results or the discussion, and that's another area where authors sometimes fail to achieve consistency within a paper. The third area where authors sometimes make mistakes is in the construction of figures and tables. Authors create figures and tables that are oftentimes too complex for the reader to readily understand, and it's important that the figures and tables within a paper be self-containing. The reader hopefully should not be able to have to go back and forth to the main text to figure out what the tables and the figures are about. There was a former president who once said that if I'm to speak for an hour, I'm ready now. If I'm to speak for a half hour, give me a week. If I'm to speak for five minutes, I need three weeks to prepare. The same is true for an abstract. Abstracts are difficult because you're trying to summarize an immense amount of work in a very limited number of words. One thing that authors can do to enhance their writing is to make, make use of available resources. There are a variety of books, articles, review articles that are available, that are freely available, that authors can use. Authors can encourage their departments to purchase some of these books that are available and use them as resources for their department. And I think another resource that authors should use are their colleagues. Colleagues are a great source of balancing and understanding of your scientific content with helping you maximize the clarity of what you're trying to write for the reader.